IPv6 attack is another practical attack against Active Directory. The full guide of this attack is available on our website sunskytech.com. At first, I'll explain the whole scenario behind of this attack and then we'll dive into our practical lab. In this scenario, we have a DC and also we have a client on the left side that wants to log in to domain. At first, the system will be turned on and after being turned on, before logging to domain, it will send a DHCP discovery in order to get its DHCP configurations. In response, the DHCP server will give the IP address of the system, the subnet, gateway, and also the IP of DNS to this system. So totally, it will send the DHCP configurations to this system. The user then requires to enter his or her username and password in order to log into domain. The system must send the password, which is in this case Inspire1, as an NTLM v2 hash to DC in order to be authenticated and in order to successfully log into domain. But there is a problem, and the problem is that this system unfortunately does not know the IP address of this DC. So it must ask the IP address of the DC from our DNS server. But there is another problem. And the other problem is this, that in order to be capable to communicate with DNS server, it must know the MAC address of this DNS server. So now it requires to get the MAC address of this DNS server. So this can be done by a protocol called ARP, which is used for IPv4 attacks, actually IPv4. And in this scenario that we're using IPv6, it is done by NDP protocol, stands for Neighbor Discovery Protocol. So it's a protocol that's used for IPv6, and it's really similar to ARP for IPv4. And with this protocol, the system asks that who has the MAC address of this IP, IPF DNS. And the DNS server in response will just give its IP ad, uh, its MAC address to this system. Now that this client has the MAC address of the DNS server, it is capable to communicate with it and it is capable to ask the IP address of the DC from DNS, which we can see in this picture. So in this stage, stage seven, it asks that what is the IP address of the DC from DNS? The DNS will give the IP address of the DC to the system. And finally, the system will successfully send the NTLM v2 hash to DC. It will be authenticated and it will successfully log into domain. So that is the normal scenario happening. But what happens when we want, when we appear as an attacker in this scenario? So let's just look at this picture. So here, in stage five, there is a big difference. And the, the difference is this. The system asks that who has the MAC address of this IP, IP of DNS, using NDP protocol. And here, instead of DNS, there is an attacker using a tool called man in the middle of attack or man in the middle. So MIT M6. This attacker will respond instead of DNS and it will send its MAC address to this system. This system thinks mistakenly that this guy is the DNS server. So according to this reason that it thinks that this guy is the DNS server, it will ask that, hey, DNS server, or actually false DNS, DNS server, what is the IP address of DC? So the attacker will respond that I know the IP address of this DC and that is me. So it will just give its own IP address. Then in the next stage, this system will send the NTLM v2 hash to this attacker mistakenly. And this attacker finally sends that NTLM v2 hash to DC. And according to this reason, this that this NTLM v2 hash belongs to administrator, to an administrator, a person who has administrator privileges on this DC, we are successful as attacker to create a user, actually create a user on DC. And that is the whole scenario behind the IPv6 attack that we're going to do with the tool 
MITM6 and also NTLM Relay X. So let's just dive into our practical lab. The first step in order to perform IPv6 attack is setting up a tool called NTLM Relay X. So that's called NTLM Relay X, and we're going to use dash six, which stands for IPv6. We're using that dash T for target, and the address of the target in this scenario is 116. We also need to use dash WH for WPAD, setting up a fake WPAD. And we must just enter the name of the domain, which is in this case penetrationlab.local. And we also need to mention the looting directory. That's a folder that's created by NTLM Relay X that will show us the dumped information of the domain. So I'm going to call that um, dumped info, for example. And uh, yeah now we're also going to set up another useful tool called mitm6 man in the middle of attack dash d stands for domain we need to give the name of the domain to this uh and yeah that is the great tool that we're going to use in order to capture that ntlmv2 hash and send it to ntlm relay x so let me just hit enter and okay till is trying to do its Task. Let me just show you what do we have in our lab. So we have a DC and we have also a, a client a client system. So that's called Apple. The first thing that I'm going to do here, I'm just going to restart it just to see that what happens if the system gets restarted. What exactly do we have as an attacker when performing IPv6 attacks? So we have to wait a little bit here. <coughs> And in the background, what do we have? The man in the middle of attack, it has uh, spoofed the WPAD. So fake WPAD.penetration.lab.local. It's using this. Great. And also what is doing, what the NTLM really X is doing here is it has client request path WPAD.that. Okay, it's uh, clear. And also, great, here we have, we've gotten the host is called apple.penetrationlab. Everything is fine. So now let me just check my home directory here and check if we have any dumped info folder here. So I have the main info, but I do not have any dumb info. So it's not created yet. But let's just do also another thing here and we are going to apple and i'm going to here i'm going to log in as administrator so i'm going to give the password of the administrator here so let's just see what happens in the background so mitm6 is just Doing its task, great. And also here, here, that's that was what I was looking for. And here, look at here, user privileges found, modifying domain ACL, and also here adding user to privileged group enterprise admins and created user. So the user that we were looking for and we were trying to create it on the DC is created, great. And also we have the we have the name of the user, which the username is this, and also the password is written here for us. Great. Now let's just look at my home directory. Uh, actually, it might be created before. I have to refresh it, or I have to go to another directory. Sometimes it takes a little bit. So here we have dumped info. Great. And let's just check this folder. Here we have gotten really useful files. Let's just start with the most interesting one. That's called domain user by groups.html. Okay, let's just open it. And here we have gotten a bunch of domain users. Look at here. We have domain users here. We have Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, SQL Service, Alexa Ripley, and blah, blah, blah. 
you have administrator here look at the description as admin when they are just trying to create a user on a dc they might they might write some information in the description and they might mistakenly type the password there in order to remind themselves the password they do not know that we can see that either and also uh, we have group policy creator owners we have domain admins so the domain admins are there for us enterprise admins is a really clear structure so we can see which user has even is in which groups administrators domain administrators or no we can also uh we can also see the domain computers by os and you can see we have windows 10 enterprise evaluation and windows server standard evaluation so the clients microsoft and apple they are called microsoft and apple and also we have os versions there so perfect that can be so useful and also dc we have the dc here and the os versions and everything and even we have the last logon so we can check and that when was the last time that the person has logged into it and yeah that's the whole thing so we have gotten also a bunch of different useful uh files that might be so important for example policy the main policy it says password properties password complex uh, the length of it and everything password length everything it's so useful if you are creating anything like any password list so we know that the, the password policy can help us in order to create it better. So we have gotten a bunch of different and great useful information there that you can also see. But let's just see if this user was really created. Of course, it was created with just uh, B and D. So let's just see in our DC. That is our DC. And if I remember properly, so let's just log in and psa.msc this is a great command that will take us to to this active directory users and computers and here bd this is the user that we have successfully created and if you look at the properties of the users uh member of cannot see something special it's just the main users and it says active directory domain service folder penetration lab dot local groups that's it we cannot see anything really important so that's it that was the power of ipv6 attacks i hope that you have enjoyed the video don't forget to subscribe our channel